One of the most convoluted boot procedures on the Altair was booting a floppy disk without a ROM card and the disk boot loader ROM present on that card. In that case, you could buy a paper tape from Altair or a cassette tape that contained disk bootloader code that would turn around and read Sector 0 off of the floppy disk and on that Sector 0 was another loader that then completed the process of loading the disk. In most cases, that would be, for example, BASIC. We're going to demonstrate that process here today. Alright, so first of all, we fire on the computer and give it a reset. And as always, we have an empty machine that has no ability to do anything until we put something in it. What we're going to do is use the front panel to put in a bootstrap loader, again, just to give it enough smarts to begin reading from paper tape, just like we've done with BASIC. But instead of loading in BASIC, it's going to actually use paper tape to load the disk boot loader. Alright, so let's go ahead and put that in at address 0. First byte is 76 and 3. So 76, we'll deposit that in location 0. And then a 3, we'll use deposit next, puts it in location 1. 323 and 0. 323. Oh, excuse me, 323 and 20. So let's go ahead and fix that. We want a 20 there. All right, 76 and 21. 76. <coughs> excuse me. And 21. 323 and 20. 41, 302. 77, 61. 32 and 0. 333 and 20. 17 and 320. 333, 21. 275, 310. 275, 3, 10, 55, 167, 300, 351, 13, and 0. Alright, that's the bootstrap loader now in memory. Next we have to set these switches so basic and the bootstrap, excuse me, the checksum loader on tape knows what type of serial port is being used. We're using a 2SIO board with two stop bits. For that configuration, these four bits need to be zero. For basic, using the teletype as a console, these four bits also need to be zero to tell the checksum loader, excuse me, the, yes, the checksum loader on the tape to use a 2SIO board. All right, I'm going to go ahead and turn on the teletype now. And I'm going to reset to address zero and hit run. This is the bootstrap loader code running. Let's take a look at the teletype. If you look down here at the tape, you can see the leader pattern over and over and over. We're going to hit it start. The bootstrap loader, as soon as it sees the leader pattern in, knows that it's now loading the checksum loader. That's what that is right there. And if we watch the lights on the Altair, we'll see this pattern change as soon as the bootstrap loader has finished loading the checksum loader, and the checksum loader takes over. That takes about, okay, there it is. Now the checksum loader is running. It's loading the payload off the rest of the tape. Now instead of loading basic, it's actually loading the disk boot loader code, which is relatively short, only about 256 bytes. When it's done loading, it will be given control. It'll then turn around and load sector zero of the hard disk, which contains another loader, which is then given control and loads the disk. Now that last part happens really quick, so you have to watch closely here as it happens. It'll be here. Okay, there's the disk boot loader running. It's already turned around and given control to the disk loader. And now we look and we can see basic is actually up and running. And we're good to go. Highest disk number. How many files? Two. How many random files? Two. 
All right, so there we go. So that is the process of loading BASIC off a of disk, booting disk BASIC when you did not have the PROM card or the disk boot loader ROM. It could actually be done with paper tape, going from a bootstrap loader to the checksum loader to the disk boot loader to the loader that's on sector zero of the disk, which then finally loads BASIC. Pretty convoluted, but heck, we're up and running. All right, that is it for this video. The computer used in this video is actually an Altair 8800 clone computer. This computer duplicates the look and the feel, the feature, performance, and the limitations of a real Altair, but it does it with modern hardware on the inside. That way it's ultra reliable for you, and you don't have to worry about damaging a vintage or museum quality equipment while you're doing these fun experiments and reliving this great period in computing history. Be sure to visit the folks at AltairClone.com to learn more about this great computer.